excited you could be here. Look, today we're going to talk about something very important, which is financial inclusion. We're really talking about how financial inclusion makes an impact to society and what you need to know so those that need the access to finances can actually get the access to finances that they need. So with us today, I have this conversation is Kaylin Brown. Now, she's actually the founder of Share Change, an initiative to fund life-changing loans to underbanked people around the globe. Now, the Share Change app offers a convenient way to contribute bit by bit toward making a micro loan. Now, she started working on Share Change after completing a master's in social entrepreneurship and aspires to motivate others to share financial opportunities and help people to spend less in order to give more. Kaylin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm excited you can be here. So when we talk about financial inclusion, um, this seems like it's a really important mission for you. So let me ask you this. What's the main aim? Like, what, What are you really trying to accomplish when it comes to financial inclusion? For sure. So one of the things I learned early in my schooling was that foreign aid is often unsustainable. Uh, A lot of aid goes to where there's a crisis and then is pulled out based on where the headlines are. Um, And there are so many crises around the world that are not being addressed. Whereas there are tools that can actually address the root cause of poverty, such as giving people access to credit to start or grow a business. Um, financial literacy training and support to learn to improve their business. Uh, You know, in the way that I've benefited from my credit card student loans, that has allowed me to improve my life um, and seek new opportunities. I think that it's really important that people around the world have access to those opportunities. And in that way, local economies can begin to develop um, rather than you know, telling people how they should improve their lives, putting the power in their hands to improve their own life as they see fit. You say around the world, do you find that this is more of an issue overseas in other countries than here in the U.S.? Often uh, there are higher rates of being unbanked or underbanked in emerging economies. However, there still are many people in Canada and the U.S. who are unbanked or underbanked um, for many reasons. Uh, Sometimes that can be not having documentation and other times it can just be like a lack of education, um, for example, a lack of trust in the system. So it is actually a problem all over the world, but I do feel that our systems here are much more robust in terms of providing access. You think, especially in the United States, just as an example, are there other reasons that the you know that the people are are underbanked? Like, do we find that minorities or people that are in uh, challenged economical you know environments um, are, are these harder situations from your experience for them to actually get the financing they need? Absolutely. Um, When I was living in San Francisco, I had a friend who was living paycheck to paycheck and just did not qualify for a credit card. He was a visible minority and I could see um, discrimination uh, playing a part in that, but also just the fact that like there was no generational wealth in his family. Um, And for me as an entrepreneur, I was able to initially I struggled to secure a credit card because I didn't have income. I was bootstrapping. All of my savings were going into my business. Um, And then I was able to, through having someone else help secure my credit card, uh, to be able to get one. So I definitely think that there are gaps in terms of generational wealth and the impacts of that and how that can change your access to uh, tools, especially credit. We see and you know, you'll go to like a lower income community and you see so many payday loan shops, right? Which are, you know, there are regulations around that, but they're borderline predatory, in my opinion, um, with really high interest rates. So I, I do definitely think that um, a lot of factors play a role. When you actually are helping people get the money that they need, 
what do you think the biggest objective that they're there are? What is the biggest obstacle I should say that they're running into? Have they tried banks? Have they tried credit issuing, uh, you know, credit cards? Have they tried these routes and just no one will approve them because of those risk factors? Yeah. So often here it's not being able to get approved because of risk factors. Although I have seen a lot of improvements uh, where some banks will provide prepaid credit cards where you can begin to build up your credit history. There's also a lot of neobanks and fintechs that are looking to address this issue. So the availability of solutions is definitely getting better. But if you look at um, an emerging economy, um, there's often much less access in the sense that people are looking for a very, for a loan, for example, people are looking for a small amount, say $500 USD. The cost to underwrite that loan and to do the due diligence around it is pretty similar to doing due diligence around a $10,000 loan. So the cost associated is very high, which means that even with very high interest, there's slim margins. So traditional banks are often not interested in this space. They see it as high risk, not as profitable. Um, there's less motive to serve uh, people looking for smaller ticket loans, um, smaller ticket savings accounts, for example, going to rural communities that are very small. Um, so there are organizations uh, called microfinance institutions or microfinance organizations that tend to take that on, but are traditionally struggling to be financially sustainable because of the high costs and needing to grow to a certain scale for that to be uh, profitable. So how do you do it at ShareChange? Like how, how does that work? How does how does your program work? So we partner with these microfinance organizations that are already on the ground. They're doing a great job at empowering people in their community. But if they want to grow, they themselves need to access capital, uh, whether that be equity or a loan. And a lot of organizations are financing themselves by taking loans from traditional banks. Um, in Uganda, they're getting interest rates around 11% uh, for those loans. So what we're trying to do is create access to funding at a lower cost by engaging the crowd. And so one of the things that I want to do is engage people that feel like they maybe can't afford to donate or they're on a tight budget and giving them creative ways in an app to give bit by bit until they have enough to make a solid loan and be able to see who that goes to, how it helps them, and if the person was able to repay. Do they earn a return on that loan? No, they're philanthropic uh, loans, so they do not earn a return. And part of the reason for that is that a part of the mission is to lower the cost of capital to these organizations so that they can free up more resources to continue to pro provide and improve their services like financial literacy training or entrepreneurial business training, for example, because that ultimately helps the client to succeed, which means the organization gets repaid and there's a bigger impact. So you go to somebody like I think Penda Capital, for example, uh, and they're one of you know somebody that loans money, but they have a hard time getting the money that they actually need to be able to help the underserved. And then what you're doing through ShareChange is with the app, you make it super simple for people to contribute really even minuscule amounts to them to actually donate where they can actually donate to somebody and follow the story of the success, what that money did, how it made an impact how it changed their life. Is that, is that pretty accurate? Yes, that's exactly, exactly accurate. And the cool thing about it is when that's repaid, then the donor gets to choose who that goes to next. So they can see that $25 say, just continue to empower multiple people. Um, of course, not all loans are repaid, uh, but traditionally uh, on other platforms that do, uh, microcredit financing, the repayment rates are about 96%, which is pretty decent. Um, so most people, when they contribute, will be able to see that revolving impact over time. That's really powerful. 
uh, and and I and I love the act, absolute the the mission that you serve. We, and and I think you know I think you've touched and in in looking at you know share change and some of what you do. It kind of looks like it's even positioned to help um, you know fight against poverty. So give me some insight about how this helps fight that. Absolutely. So I'll give you an example of uh, someone that is currently looking for funding on our app. She runs a poultry business. It's very small. She had 15 chickens. She's in Uganda. She had 15 chickens donated to her and she's begun to make, uh, make money through selling the eggs, breeding them. Uh, and she wants to expand that. She wants to buy more chickens and she wants to start, uh, uh, to sell to local markets where she can access more customers. And from there, she's hoping to use that to supplement her school fees. Um, and what we've seen, uh, for example, the CEO of Penda Capital himself, his mother had received uh, a micro loan and, you know, he grew up walking barefoot to school and then he ended up going abroad for his education and, working for major companies and then coming home and starting this amazing organization that empowers people um, like his mother. So there is this uplifting of an individual, but also their family potentially creating jobs in their community um, and creating opportunities for their children and their children's children. Of course, sometimes these loans are simply just to get through tough times, like a health shock and paying health care bills. But if someone doesn't have to lose their business or their inventory in order to get through that tough time, um, then it's going to have an impact overall on their continued livelihood and building that business and hopefully being able to, as I said, build up local economies. So let's say that I want to take part. Where where can I go? Because it's all done through your app, correct? We mostly do our funding through the app, but you can also donate with Stripe online if that is something that you're interested in doing. Um, I know a lot of people don't like to download apps, so we opened up that avenue as well. So if I go to your website, I choose donate, I enter a cash amount, I enter my information, What's my next step with being able to actually choose who that money goes to? So if you're donating online, you don't have access to see who it goes to. 90% of your funds do go directly to a loan, and then we'll email you later with examples of who was funded that month. But in the app, that is where you can see directly who you funded and then be able to redirect the donation. Where can my I get the app? I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, mind you, uh, we will continue to reinvest your uh, donation, whether or not you've chosen who your money goes to. Kaylin, where can we go to get the app? WeShareChange.com. Now, is it available with uh, Android and with Apple? It's on the Google Play Store right now for Android, and we will be releasing iOS on test flight in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so from the website, I can go to whether I have an Android or whether I have an Apple phone, I'm able to go to get the app and actually see who I'm donating to donate and and kind of, you know, be able to follow that money as it goes from one person. If the loans pay back, it gets loaned to somebody else and I can kind of see the people that I touch with this. Absolutely. So what inspired you to really do this? That's a great question. The why is what drives me, which is that when I was younger, I went on a service trip to India to help build an orphanage. And the kids I were I was working with, I found out they had lost their parents uh, to suicide because of predatory lending in their community. Um, there being a lack of access to any financial services uh, provides an opportunity for loan sharks and there's often unethical collection practices. They're worried about their children being in danger. So many, many children ended up in orphanages. And I felt so strongly connected to that and wanting to be able to do something. But I knew that just sending like a sum of money right now was not a sustainable solution. So I spent a while looking for how I could 
get involved in making an impact, but ultimately that like each of those children um, and their stories have driven me to be passionate about financial inclusion and ethical finance. That's really interesting. Um, and, and I love the mission. And, and like I said, what you're, what you're really trying to accomplish micro loans, how big are they? How big are these loans that you're typically seeing that are needed to make an impact in somebody's life? On our platform right now, they're about $800 Canadian, which is slightly less in US dollars, probably like 600, 650. Um, but I've seen these loans be anywhere from $200 to 1500, uh, depending on what the individual needs. So really small loans. I mean, comparably, and you know, you mentioned the, the, the story from one of your, the people that had received money in Uganda. And I love that with the chickens. Can you give me another example of, of, of a story that means a lot to you where you guys really actually really made a difference? Mm -hmm. So there was a woman, uh, we made this loan through a different partner, but um, her name was Gladys and she lived in Kenya and she's a single mother. She has a farm, but she's beginning to be affected by climate change and droughts. So she was looking for funding to buy weather resistant crops this year, uh, which would ultimately increase her yield. And with those profits, she was able to send her kids to better schools and also provide them with more consistent meals. Hmm. And that's pretty cool because you get to deal with this and you see these success stories every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's very exciting. So how do you, do you hand pick the people that, because I imagine of the, the financial institutions that are actually lending the money, there's a lot of people that they're helping. So how do you actually get the real time story of the people that are being donated to, to be able to share that with your audience? So we built a platform that the microfinance organization can log into and put this information in for each individual, um, their photo, their story, how much they need, why they need it, and the repayment schedule. And then that shows in our app and then they upload the repayments as the repayments come in, which then show to the users in the app. So it was ultimately a pretty big undertaking to build this entire system. It took a while, but um, we have agreements around, firstly, what type of loan we're willing to accept and what our limits are there, as well as ensuring that our partners employ client protection principles and having transparent loan terms and ethical collection practices. Um, so we allow the client to ultimately pick uh, sorry, the partner to pick the clients um, within a certain set of guidelines that we have. So how do you even pay for all this? Because the app build out a loan on that would be substantial. So I'm just curious from an entrepreneurial mm -hmm. standpoint, like how have you even financially done this considering you're literally solving a problem that the problems created by having super slim margins to begin with? Yeah. Um, it was a combination of um, our developers were very interested in our mission and were willing to help to build this uh, partially th through equity. Um, I, I, as I've said, because I'm an entrepreneur, it was hard just to get a credit card. So traditional loans are not very accessible to me. Um, so what I did was I firstly put my savings in, and then I looked for funding from friends and family uh, to get this off the ground. So we're very much bootstrapped right now. And we're very fortunate to find people who believed in why we're doing this, who were willing to contribute for equity. Um, but we will be looking for investment uh, as we start to grow and scale. Through venture capital. So what are some of your other favorite solutions right now with venture cap or not venture capital with financial inclusion? What are some of the solutions you're seeing? Cause this is your world that you think are innovative and, and could really make a difference. Cause this is a serious problem. Like I, I try to solve this problem every day, just the United States. And you start to get to Uganda and these other areas, like it's, it's really big problem. So what, what are some of the things you're seeing besides the tech that you've developed, which is phenomenal, by the way, the system, 
um, that you think are helping solve this problem? Uh, so one is an application called Even Financial, which essentially helps people to smooth their paycheck if they have um, unpredictable shift work, for example. So, you know, it'll take out a sum of your money um, when you get paid. And then if you are low on money later in the month or, you know, later, a few months later, then they will essentially provide you a small amount of credit because they've seen that you have like fluctuating income and that you will be able to offset that. Um, and it's, it's a very interesting solution that is really geared toward actually people in the U S, um, which is cool because it's not a traditional creating access to traditional credit, more so providing tools and like minute, minute amounts of credit or consumption smoothing. Um, and then another one I really like is the Kiva protocol. Kiva is based out of uh, California and they also crowdfund, uh, they crowdfund credit, but they've shifted to also really focusing on leveraging the blockchain to give people self-sovereign identities. So one of the biggest barriers to financial inclusion is a lack of identification. If you were born in like a very rural area or even in some places, a lot of women don't have identification and depend on their husband or father to, you know, sign a loan, uh, sign for a loan on their behalf. So the solution basically helps people to develop like their own identity. Um, Kiva partnered with the government and I believe it was Sierra Leone to develop this solution for their citizens, which is really cool because, you know, again, it's not specifically a traditional financial tool, but, you know, looking at the underlying causes of why this problem exists, I think those are the most innovative solutions that I tend to see. Yeah, I'm really familiar with Kiva. I talk about them quite a bit. Um, yeah. I, I think they're one of the most organized in the space of, of you know, micro loans to underserved. So I, I really appreciate that. I, I love your suggest or your feedback on kind of what's working right now in that space. So what would you like to see? I mean, what do you think? You know, you're, you're trying to find a really big problem here. And I think you've got a phenomenal solution. I mean, I don't think you definitely do. Um, what do you want to see? Like, what do you want to see change in the world to make it easier for the underbanked to, to be able to get the money they need? Because this is kind of crazy. If you think about it, like what you just talked about with just being able to verify your identity. Like, these are things in the United States we don't even understand. Like, these are problems we don't even know exist in the world, right? I mean, somebody that's literally trying to get 15 chickens to start a business. I mean, these are things that we can't even relate to over here in a large part. So it's it's so big, and I think it's so undernoticed here, especially in the United States. Uh, what do you think should happen? What, what do you want to see more of to help solve this problem long term? Hmm. I'm a bit of an idealist. Um, so one of the things that came up for me was when I was in school, I'd find myself going to buy a coffee or a latte even that cost $6. And, you know, it, I, it hit me that that $6 could buy multiple chickens for someone across the world. And that these small habits I have that you know, sometimes it's, it's great to treat ourselves. Don't get me wrong, but I'd, I'd love to see people who, have access to financial tools and opportunities share just a little bit even at a time um and to have an awareness of the difference that that can make proportionally um especially people who are maybe on a slightly tighter budget and feel like they can't really afford to make a difference um shifting that awareness and understanding and Ultimately, I envision that a lot of like fintech and blockchain technologies are going to facilitate an accelerated change over the next decade. Um, but I would love to see everyone have access to financial tools that are ethical. Um, I'd also like to see more research around 
the impact of microcredit and how to make it more impactful for each individual. Um, that's something that we're hoping to contribute to as well. How much does it, 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 let's say that I want to make, I want to donate to somebody. I get in, get in the app, find somebody. Is it a total amount that I'm looking at or how is it done where it's just small contributions to get the total amount? I mean, I'm curious because like, for example, let's say it's 600 bucks that somebody needs. Well, that's kind of a lot of money for a lot of people. So do they come in and just make small donations until they get to the 600, then hundred percent of that money goes to the client or do you combine the funds from multiple partners to help support that client? So the funds are combined from multiple users to support the client. Um, occasionally, you might see someone go in and just fund an entire loan. If they want to do that, you can actually just instantly fund someone rather than building up in small amounts. But we have a feature that basically accumulates your balance in your account until you're ready to make a significant loan. Uh, so the minimum is $25. So you can set your goal, be it $25 or $50 and slowly work toward that. Or you can sign up to give, or sorry, to contribute monthly um, automatically. And then when you hit your goal, we send you a notification. So I can contribute $100 a month. And then when I get to $400 that somebody really needs, then you get to notify me, all that money goes there. And then I get to kind of follow that person's success to see what they did with it. And then hopefully they pay that money back. And then that money then gets donated to somebody else, et cetera. And I can continue to contribute the hundred bucks a month. And then that money and choose more people to help. And, and ultimately as that compounds, I just have a lot of money in play, helping a lot of different entrepreneurs all around the world. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. What country do you see that you think, because I hear a lot about South Africa. Do, what, is there a country that you think has more of the problem of financial inclusion that deals with more of that uh, being underserved, underbanked um, than others? Hmm. I mean, so many countries struggle with this. I know that um, in terms of the gender gap and account ownership, Sub-Saharan Africa is triple um, the global average. So in particular, uh, women are seeking or require empowerment there. But, you know, financial inclusion is a major problem in Bangladesh, um, like India, Malaysia, Indonesia. Like it's it's really a lot of emerging economies Um have this problem. So I wouldn't necessarily uh, pick one country over another, but one of the reasons that we chose Uganda was because of uh, the gender gap and being able to focus on empowering women and youth, um, but also because the interest rates there have been traditionally so high. So if somebody, what's the one message you think um, as we as we get ready to wrap up, what's one thing that maybe we haven't talked about, or one message that you want to get across to those listening and watching um, that's important to convey that maybe we haven't dove into already? I think it's important to convey that microcredit, though it's really focused on the social development goal number one of eradicating poverty, it actually can have an impact on other areas like clean cooking stoves, um, helping people with their health and the environment, or developing uh, decentralized energy systems by giving people loans to buy solar panels um, rather than using kerosene. And that way there's this leapfrog development where they don't need these centralized power grids the way that we have them. So I think that uh, really the point that I would like to end on is that microcredit can have so many different impacts uh, depending on the type of loan. And uh, I think that that's really exciting because, you know, if you have a cause that's close to your heart, like environmental sustainability, you can find, you can find an opportunity to fund someone that also aligns with that. Where can everybody go to learn more, take action, see what you actually, you learn more about what you do that we haven't covered today um, and actually be able to start donating. 
you can go to WeShareChange.com where you can instantly donate through Stripe or you can find the link for the app to the Google Play Store or you can contact me directly on LinkedIn if you're interested in getting involved or learning more. It's Kaylin Brown, C-E-L-Y-N Brown. Kaylin, thanks for coming on with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So listen, if you're listening and watching, um, it, it's a, this is a really big deal. I mean, as entrepreneurs... We understand the struggle of, of, of running our businesses, but the truth is we don't really understand the struggle across the world that people have to even do the smallest things that to us come so easy. And it's interesting because it doesn't take a lot to make a really significant impact in somebody's life. And that's the one thing I've learned in helping business owners get capital. It's just, it's so amazing to like watch the impact of putting money into somebody's hands that deserves it. And then watching what they do with it, all the people, I mean, literally like my hair stands up in my arms when I, when I say that, I feel that because it's like, I, I get to think about the stories after story after story of business owner that just needed a shot. And then you give them the shot and they just do these amazing things. They solve these problems for so many people and then they get it help and they get to employ other people. And it's just life-changing and the impact that you have in that, it really feels like you're a small part of their success. And what Kaylin's done, I've never seen anybody do anything like this before. I mean, I'm familiar with Kiva. You've heard me talk about Kiva before, but I'm not familiar with something like this where you could literally pick who you want to donate to and then follow their success. And literally they pay back that money and you continue to contribute. The money just multiplies to help more and more and more people. So uh, be part of change. You know, the interesting thing is there's so many statistics to the people that donate and give get so many multiples in return just because I believe that that's how the, the universe works. Like if you're just genuinely a good person, you give and you're really here to help serve, then all that comes back to you 10 times fold. And let's be honest, $10 does, $25 does, $50, $100. It might not be a lot of money to us, but to somebody else, that's a really big deal. And that compounds and is life changing to what they're able to accomplish in their lives and their business and in their communities. So I really, really, really highly recommend you should go to WeShareChange.com. If you go to WeShareChange.com, you can donate right here. You're able to go ahead and get the app on Google Play. By the time this is live, you could probably be able to get it on Apple as well. And all their social links are right here as well. You can even communicate through email with them. So go to WeShareChange. It walks you through the process. It goes through the exact steps. You can learn more about them. You can learn more how it works. And just genuinely make a difference in this world. It's such a simple, affordable thing to do. It's so easy right now to do it. And yet it makes such a big difference in your impact in the world. And I promise you that you'll walk out feeling really rewarded and really positive about the contribution and impact that you've had. So make sure you go to wesharechange.com 